Yes. Okay. So I hope you guys are doing well. Okay. So today <clears throat> I will tell you about the just AS overview. Okay. And we will discuss a little bit about the VPN concept. And I will also show you that where we are going to perform the practicals. Okay. So <clears throat> right now just start we will yeah. start with the AS overview. So if I'm gonna talk about okay. So I will share you the course outline. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Okay. So let me start with the course outline. Okay. So first thing, in the first class, we are going to discuss about the Cisco ESA firewall. Okay. Then we are going to start. I will show you that how you can set up the basic labs okay for that you need one machine which is known as vmware in that vmware you guys want to install the evng okay in that evng with the help of one tool win scp you guys will install the io images cisco io images and the asa image okay i'm gonna show you all those things during the sessions okay but right now I'm, i will just show you that what is vmware okay so this is a my VM machine. Okay, I will share you this VM machine link. Okay, I have basically I have installed it on my drive. I will share you my drive link, and I will give you the license also, so that you can you guys you can use the pro version. So you guys can use the uh, VMware sixteen pro version. Okay, and you guys will use EVNG community version. In this EVNG community version, you need one WinSCP tool. Okay. I'm going to share you all these file images and their licenses files also. So here you have to write this IP 192.168.2.131 that you got on your EVNG. Okay. So the by default password is root and Eve for every EVNG machines. So here I will show you that uh, where are the images. You will go on to the uh, OPT unit labs add-ons okay here you're going to install the all the cisco IL images means cisco router cisco switches okay layer 2 layer 3 devices here on the bin folder okay so this is your license files so you're going to install all these files i'm going to share you the files and if i will talk about the firewall so these my these are my firewalls files okay so this is my asa so i will provide you all the asa image that's of version 9 okay and asa v also okay if you need any other images of for any other files, I will provide you all those uh, links and the my drive links I'm talking about. Okay, so I will show you all those steps that how you can install the EVNG, how you can uh, put the IOL images in your EVNG and the AS images. Okay, so next topic after installing or we can say after doing the basic lab setups. Okay, so the main topic will come is IPsec. So we will discuss about the IPsec. First, we will discuss the concept of the IPsec. What is IPsec? Why we need IPsec? Then we will do the practical on the IPsec. Okay. Then we will see that what are the drawbacks? Or we can say, what are the limitations we have in the IPsec. Can anyone tell me what do you understand by IPsec? If you guys have done uh, like VPN on any other firewall, can anyone define me what is IPsec? Why do we need IPsec? What is the purpose of the IPsec? Is there anyone? Okay, no problem. So basically, here we perform no, what? Sir. Sorry. No answer. No answer. Okay. So basically, in with the help of IP second, you protect Hello. your data. Okay. You encrypt your Hello. data. This IPsec use one protocol that is known as ESP. Okay. There is one more protocol as AH, but currently we don't use AH because it doesn't provide you encryption. Okay. So we use ESP. Okay. When we will done with the IPsec, we, when we will see that what are the limitations we have, what are the drawbacks we have in the IPsec, 
then we will go on to the our next topic that will be gre okay so same thing we will do for the gre also okay we will uh, talk about the concepts we have in the gre okay why do we need gre we'll do the practical on the gre then again we will see that what are the drawbacks in the uh, of the gre okay so basically can anyone tell me that what are the drawbacks we have in the gre its drawback is very famous basically it doesn't give you the data encapsulation okay that's why we have other type of concept that is gre over ipsec GRE over IPsec. When we will done with the GRE over IPsec, then our next topic will be uh, MGRE. Okay. So MGRE uses one protocol that is my next of resolution protocol. Okay. Basically, this NHRP are of two types. One is my static and one is my dynamic. Okay. So if you will talk about the static, we have what concept? MGRE. If we'll talk about the dynamic, we have a very core topic of my of our ASA that is our DM VPN. Okay, in the DM VPN, we have three phases: phase one, phase two, and phase three. Okay, so here now in every each and every topic, first we will talk about the concepts. Okay, if your concepts are not clear now, you will not be able to perform the practical. Okay, you can do, perform the practical with the help of just commands. Okay, but you will not get it why we are using those commands. Okay, so whenever we will start with any topic, suppose we have started with a DM VPN, then first we will discuss that why we need DM VPN. Okay, then we will talk about the concepts of the DM VPN. Why? Uh, what is the concept of the DM VPN? Okay, why we are using DM VPN? What is the benefit when we will use the DM VPN? Why there are three phases in the DM VPN? Okay, then we will go on to the practical. Okay, first we will cover phase one, then we will cover phase two, then we will cover the phase three. Okay, so when you will done with this DM VPN, till DM VPN, na, almost uh, we can say 35% topic is covered. Okay, this is the very core topic. In the interview, uh, if you will go give the answers on the behalf of the VPN, okay. So suppose if you are giving the interview for the security perspective, then they are gonna ask you forty to fifty percent question from here. Only this much topic, okay. And there is one more core topic. I will discuss about that topic also, okay. When we are done with this DM VPN concept, okay, then I, we will discuss about the IK V two. Okay, same thing we are going to do here also concept, practical, then we will see what are the, if we have any drawbacks here, then we will talk about the drawbacks. Okay, so we will, uh, I forgot to mention two uh, other points also. So we will do the SVTI also. Okay, basically why we use SVTI? We use SVTI to remove GRE. Okay, why do we rem uh, remove GRE? We have two types of modes in the IPsec, tunnel and transport. If you will talk about the tunnel and transport, if you will see the packets now properly, okay, basically you will not able to see the practic, uh, packets because ESP what? ESP, it encapsulates every packet. We will just able to see the public IPs or we can say the outer headers, okay. But whenever we have the duplicacy of outer headers, okay, then we use what? Transport mode. What this transport will, mode will do, it will uh, see the packet, it will analyze the packet and it will see if there are duplicacy of outer headers. Okay. We will discuss this in, in depth. Okay. Right now we are just discussing the points. Okay. I'm just giving you the overview. If we will not get it, no problem. Okay. Whenever there is a duplicacy of outer headers, then transport mode will do, it will remove one header, one outer header. Okay. That will be your GRE's outer header. Okay. Not the ESP one. So, and there is one more thing, whenever we will do the practical, okay, we are going to capture the packets, okay, we'll talk about the packet structure also, okay, what we have in the inner header, okay, what we have, which protocol, after inner header, which protocol we are using, okay, suppose we have first ICMP payload, then we have inner header information, then what we have, uh, then we have suppose uh, public uh, GRE header, okay, then we have GRE outer header, 
and if we are using the ipsec okay then we have the esp header then again we have what outer header okay so when we are done with this what we will do we will uh, make this packet smaller by removing this outer header by removing this gre header okay so that we will not have the any latency our network should be scalable all these things we are going to discuss okay when we are done with these topics then we are going to cover the flex vpn and the get vpn okay basically on the asa we will not be able to perform this dm vpn gre okay we will do it on the cisco's router okay as our asa device doesn't support what gre okay but it comes under this labels of the gre because here in the asa the core topics are what vpn and the net okay they will not ask you just uh, tell me that we will be able to configure dm vpn on the asa or not they will ask you simple thing that what are the thing what are the three types of faces we have in the dm vpn what is the concept of those three faces okay they are going to just ask you like this we will implement all these three faces on our cisco's router okay when we are done with this okay then we will i will introduce you what the asa okay your asa device there we will discuss about the asa what are the features we have in the asa okay then the uh, we can say the core topic or the initial topic for the asa that is your security zones what are security zones we are going to discuss here okay then we will enter i will introduce you the routing concept in the routing we are going to cover static dynamic in the dynamic we are going to cover we will do the default one also okay in the dynamic we will cover eigrp we will focus on the eigrp more okay we have ospf we can do the bgp also okay these are the protocols we are going to cover on the asa okay we will do the redistributions also if you don't know what is redistribution okay basically what happens suppose here i am running on this side i am running what eigrp and in, on this side side 2 i am running what ospf okay so if i will talk up if i want to communicate between eigrp and this ospf on the site 1 and site 2 okay i need one redistribution profile okay that profile i'm going to create on my asa okay on my edge devices also i can i can create okay but we will do on the asa so that eigrp root eigrp will share the its roots towards this site 2 and ospf will share its roots towards site 1 so that they both the sites will be able to communicate with each other okay and there is another thing what you can do you can change this protocol eigrp but you know that will create a lot of problem okay because already my site is running on the ospf okay i cannot change the protocols that much easily okay for that we have to do configuration easily or oh, for that we have to do configuration from the starting okay so it's best we can use the redistribution profile okay then one more important topic is our acl okay which is our access control list you guys have already done the acl on the ccna also okay but now we will do it on the uh, our firewall okay which is my right now we are using uh, we will use the asa firewall okay then we will see some types of acls that what you are going to do uh, standard extended types of acls okay we are going to create the groups that we that is known as object groups okay we are going to do the dscp practical okay here on my asa i am going to create it my as a ds uh, my suppose i will act uh, my asa device will act as a dscp server okay i can make it as a relay agent also okay then the core topic i have told you that in the asa we have two topics our core one is our vpn okay one is our net only these two topics will take lot of time okay and lot of your energy okay because you have to do as much as practical on these topics to understand these topics you have to do as much as practicals okay i will share you the unl files also okay so that if you will find it that uh, this topology is too much complex i will, i'm not able to create it okay you can just message on the group i will share you the unl file you can just import it on your evng so that you can you will have the topology okay basically you i will not share the configuration part uh but how i'm going to share the configuration part i'm going to share it on the notepad okay on the notepad i will share you the command but after two days i'm going to share suppose today we have done the ipsec so on that particular day i will not share those commands i will share those commands after two days 
so that on those two days you will do the practicals of ipsec by default by yourself okay how suppose here uh, if i will have any files uh, let me just check suppose this is my ikv2 file okay these are the command so what you guys what uh, people usually do they will just copy and they will just paste it on their device okay so that's why i usually don't share it on the first day whenever we will do the practical i will not share on that day will i will share it after two days okay if you guys need it if you guys can do by yourself if you guys can make notes then that will be well and good so here on the asa what we are going to usually do we are going to configure the topology on the nat and pat okay then we will see the static pad then we will do the dynamic nat then dynamic pad then identity nat okay we will do so many types of nat and pad here okay on on each type of dynamic nat static nat static uh, whatever we call uh, static pad we going to do every practical here okay then we have one more topic as mpf okay which is my modular policy framework okay then we have <coughs> i'm going to make my asa as a transparent firewall also okay sometimes we can see the deployment of asa as a transparent firewall also okay then i will show you the asdm also okay that is that will be your gui for the asa but remember this thing asa usually in the industry, in the production network we usually use it for the cli okay for example we have other firewalls like fortigate and the palo alto okay there we generally use the gui but in the asa we generally use the cli okay then we have the one virtualization concept here also on my asa so that will come under the security context okay then we have another lab okay this is also the important part in the asa we will see some interview questions from here also on your ha we will see active 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 standby failover okay these are the topics that we are going to cover and at the end of when we will done with all these topics huh? then at the end what we are going to do we will capture the packets on the asa here we, what we will talk about we will talk about the packet flow how a packet flows whenever it will go from the your the from your asa firewall okay we will see uh, we will do the packet capturing okay debugging and all those things we are going to do okay then we will see netty on the routers also okay then we will talk about the remote access vpn we will do some remote action uh remote access vpn labs okay so these are the topics that we are going to cover on our asa uh this course outline during this course outline okay so if i will talk about the vpn can anyone tell me what do you understand by vpn have you guys any of you have heard of vpn Uh, virtual private network virtual private network okay it's the full form of the vpn okay what do you understand by vpn creating a secure network through internet creating a secure network through the unsecured uh, network like uh, in internet okay. through internet okay many people has a misconception here okay that if you guys have heard about the vpn also okay you may think that it's a what it's a secure tunnel okay or we can say it's a encrypted tunnel if we will talk about the by default definition of the vpn na it's not true okay vpn it's true that vpn is secure but it uses one protocol that is your ipsec this is the protocol basically ipsec uses esp this is esp by which our uh, tunnel is secure okay but by default if i will talk about the definition of the vpn na so by default vpn's definition is simple okay it is to connect two private networks two private networks over a which network can you tell me public over network very good public network so by default vpn is not secure okay this much pointer na you have to remember this thing okay by default vpn is not secure vpn has basically two uh, we can say uh, it has two functions what are those functions one is your negotiation negotiation and one is 
टू सिक्योर योर डेटा टू सिक्योर दी डेटा जस्ट सेकेंड so if i will talk about the negotiation part for this we have one protocol that is my isa camp okay have you guys have heard of the hagel parameters anyone h a g l e hash authentication group lifetime encryption is there anyone who have talked look when we will do the uh, Uh, when we'll start with the class, no? Then there I'm going to discuss you with the everything, okay? But right now I'm just asking you some questions, okay? If you are not aware, no problem. So VPN has two functions. One is your negotiation, and one is the secure to secure the data. To secure the data, now we have one protocol known as the IPsec, okay? Here IPsec uses one protocol as ESP. This ESP will do what? This ESP will protect your data, or you can say encrypt your data. okay so whenever if some if someone is going to ask you what is the definition of the vpn you will say that it is used to connect two private networks over a public network okay now if i will just categorize this public network here so how, what do you think how many types do we have some categorization categorization here in the public network also so yes here na in the public network also we have two types okay one is my service provider and one is my internet service provider okay one is my sp and one is my isp okay suppose here i have two sites one is my australia okay and here suppose we have here in the london okay so these two sites are running here suppose here the sp service provider is running so what this service provider will do what is the job of this service provider what is the core job of this service provider can anyone tell me anyone provide internet to provide internet look for that we have the isp so what is the core job of the service provider na service provider jobs core job is that your data or you can say your traffic will not get mixed up with other customers okay it hand it handles multiple customers so it uses one protocol that is your mpls okay we have vpls here we have q and uq we have frame relay right now we don't use the frame relay okay because it's uses what clear text the data goes in the clear text what do you understand by guys uh, clear text and the cipher text can anyone tell me what is clear text what is cipher text simple concept so these are two also the layer 2 vpns okay we call them as generally call them as layer 2 vpn okay but our topic will be the layer 3 vpn which is my isp uh, ip based okay that will be my layer 3 vpn okay so here the role comes of the isp so what this isp will do suppose here my site is sydney okay and here my site is qatar okay can anyone tell me what is cipher text what is plain text or we can say what is clear text what is the difference between plain text and the cipher text whenever my data is in the plain format okay there is no encryption we call them as plain text whenever my data is encrypted we call that as cipher text okay so if you if, if i will talk about the telnet and the ssh in the telnet my data goes in which format plain text or we can say the clear text in the ssh my data usually goes on the cipher text okay if you will capture the packets just go on the tcp follow stream there you going to see that how your data is going okay what is the username or password you can see on the telnet but you will not be able to see on the ssh why because ssh uh, by default what does what it encrypts your data okay suppose here in the sydney suppose the ip is 10.1.1 okay and here this is your private ip okay and this is my public ip suppose 192.1.1 so this is my public network and this is my private network okay so this qatar should also have an ip suppose here the ip is 10.2.2.2 
and the public ip here is 200.11.1 okay so how do you think the, how a packet will go what do you think so first thing if i will talk about the outer header side so in the outer header what i will have i will obviously have the public ips that will be 199.1.1.1 then i will have the this will be my source ip okay and that in the destination ip i will have 200.1.1.1 okay and after that i will have what suppose if i am using the gre here so it will go like this gre okay then i will have what inner header in the inner header what i will have suppose i am pinging from this thing these two uh, private ip standard 1.1.2 10.2.2 okay so here in the source ip of the inner header i will have 10.1.1.1 and here i will have 10.2.2.2 then i will have what my payload okay this payload here it can be icmp okay if i if i'm using some uh, dynamic protocol then we have eigrp ospf anything can happen okay so basically in the gre we know that here uh, my data will not be encrypted so this data will go in which format in the clear text okay because gre doesn't provide what encryption okay gre encrypts one thing okay that is your ip okay it will protect your inner ip or you can say inner ip header how it going to protect your inner ip header with the help of this outer ip headers got it by this outer ip headers okay here in the vpn now we have uh, we can say some uh, like interesting topic also like our dp hellman if you will get the understanding of the dp hellman okay then we will able to see that how keys exchange how keys exchange during the vpn okay whenever we are creating any tunnel how uh, basically we create the tunnels okay we will talk about so basically we have two types of encryption one is my manual encryption and one will be my dynamic encryption okay obviously we will use the dynamic encryption to create the vpn okay but why we don't usually use the manual encryption if i will talk about first tell me that why do we need encryption what do you guys understand by encryption can anyone tell me why do we need encryption to protect the data to protect our data so that our data will go into the cipher text okay so no one will able to see that or no one will be able to see our data okay so basically we have if i will talk about the manual key encryption so here what we will have i will have one common key okay why do we need key we need key to encrypt okay if if i will encrypt my data okay suppose on the site one i have encrypted my data so i need one key right why i have to send that key towards my site to so that if i will send some data okay and i have encrypted that data with one key okay then i have to share that key to my site to also na so that it will decrypt that data with the help of that decryption key okay so here in the key concept na also we have two things one is my symmetric and one is my asymmetric can you tell me what is symmetric key and one is asymmetric key this this is the thing we have in the ccna also what do you guys understand by symmetric and asymmetric okay no problem so in this symmetric na we will have only one key okay that key will do what that key will itself will do the encryption part and the decryption part okay but here on the asymmetric na we will have the two keys okay one key will do what one key will encrypt and one key will do decryption part okay so here i have told you the three we have uh, one uh, parameters like hagel parameters okay we will talk about how this hagel also works okay 
here hash why do we need hashing hash is used for the integrity what do you guys understand by integrity anyone can anyone tell me why do we need integrity okay no problem another thing we have the authentication then we have the group here in this group now we use one dynamic key generation thing that is our your dh we generally call it as dp hellman okay this dp hellman na is asymmetric it is what asymmetric okay but the output that comes from this na that will be your symmetric and this symmetric na will be your secret key what the secret key will do this key will decrypt your data and encrypt your data encrypt and decryption will perform here okay in this asymmetric key na it will generate two types of keys one is your private key and one is your public key here we will talk about the internal part of the dp hellman okay how this dp hellman work okay there is basically one math formula here okay we will talk about that formula also during the sessions okay right now uh, uh, we were discussing that why we have two uh, kinds of key generation one is my manual key okay one is my dynamic key generation why we are not using the manual key generation can anyone tell me if you have any idea that why we are not using the manual key type anyone you can guess also it doesn't error, matter if error in putting the key sorry error in putting the keys error in putting the keys uh no 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 anything else suppose here i have two sides site 1 and site 2 okay and this is my tunnel got it and here na i am use i am sharing some data suppose i am uh, sharing 10 gb data okay it will go in the bit by bit okay and here suppose this is my key uh 0 1 2 and 3 0 belongs to a 1 belongs to b 2 belongs to c 3 belongs to d okay suppose i have shared his uh, this site one has one word that is bad okay and i am sharing this bad from this tunnel okay with the help of this we call usually call it as session key with this session key so how my data will go it will go like this b stands for 1 a stands for 0 and d stands for 3 so my data will go like this 103 okay if you guys have given the competitive exam okay there we have uh, like na usually things come like this zero belongs to this one belongs to two okay they will give you some options find the correct answer okay so if you will use the same session key na if you will use the same key for our large kind of data okay for bulk of data then what hacker will do he will capture that bulk of data and it will run one type of attack which will be your brute force dictionary attack what this brute force dictionary attack usually do na it will find the algorithm that which type of algorithm we are using what type of key we are using that's why we are we don't usually use the manual key okay because if you'll use the manual key then what we have to do we have to generate key every time okay that will be a problem for the administrator so that's why we have a method call as dynamic key generation okay that's why we generate keys dynamically so how we usually use how we usually generate keys dynamically with the help of dp hellman okay what this dp hellman will do it will generate keys dynamically okay so it will generate keys after every one hour okay we will discuss about the dp hellman concepts also okay so these are the things that we are going to cover on our as thing okay so anything else guys do you have any questions regarding the course outline anyone else anyone hello 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 anyone okay so i hope uh, i will see you guys soon during when, whenever you start with the batch okay that's it for today from my side bye bye good night take care guys
Sir, can can you interact for question and answers like a uh, two minute advice? Okay, you need advice. Yes, tell me. Yes, sir. So basically, I have done my uh, graduation in science field, not into okay. IT, but uh, okay. like math, physics, and electronics. Okay. And I'm very new to this field. Okay, I'm you are okay. Is currently, and pursuing my masters in IT. And my professor, he asked me to learn about CCNA first to go for the AWS. Yes, so okay. I'm not able to find, like, it's very difficult to me understand the keys and understand the networks and everything. Okay, what is okay. the best way to go from okay. for I, AWS I, to start from the beginning? Okay, I will advise you. Okay. Can you see my screen right now? Yeah, it's showing Zoom. Okay. First thing now, you have to go with the CCNA first. Okay. Okay. They will they will provide you free lectures. Okay. CDP. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the CDP. They will provide you free lectures. Okay. After when you are when your concepts are clear for the CCNA. Okay. You basically here now. I need you need to just clear the routing part. Okay. Personally, if I will say the security field is best in the IT. Okay. okay. Security field is the best in the IT. Okay, so in this security, you know, how you can enter? Okay, basically, I'm telling you the entry point, how you can enter in the IT, in the security. Okay, so here the packages are also very good. You can Google it. Okay, so you can enter it by doing two, uh, you can say two or three firewalls. Okay, one firewall also is enough. Okay, one firewall right. is also enough. But if you can, if you'll go into the market, with the knowledge of two to three firewalls, suppose Palo Alto 40 gate also and the ASA. Okay, ASA is the core firewall. Okay, please remember this thing. ASA is the most difficult one and the most demanding firewall also. Okay, here we have many interview questions. Okay, I will share you those questions also. So from this ASA, like when you will done with the ASA, you can go for other firewalls also, Palo Alto 40 gate. But with just ASA also, now you can enter into the security. Okay, but when you are doing the ASA, you have to please you have to go through some lectures of the CCNA also. Okay, I will tell you that you have to clear a routing concept only. Okay, and basic switching concepts also. When we are in the classes, okay, I'm gonna share you that what are the topics you have to go on the routing, what are the topics you will go on to the switching. Okay, what are you will not you don't have to just go through the whole syllabus of the CCNA. Okay, you have to just go through the certain amount that we need in the firewalls okay so this is your entry point to enter in the security field okay in the it okay after when you are comfortable with these firewalls okay then we have other devices also if you will have to shift on the cloud okay then we have aws azure all those things got it got it yes yeah, in the aws yes. also we have firewalls all those things but at the end all these things merge together okay but Somehow you have to start somewhere, right? So you can yeah. start from the CCNA. Okay. You have to start from the CCNA. Okay. Because if you don't know what is routing, okay. If you don't know what is the basic of the networking, then how are you going to uh, learn what is ASA and all those things? Okay. So you have to, it will take around 10 days to complete the CCNA. Okay. Can you give me a ro roadmap for that? Like from CCNA look, to cloud? Look, CCNA, first you will go for the CCNA. Okay. In the CCNA, I'm going to tell you, do the basic switching part. Okay. Then you can go with the routing. Do, uh, you have to learn what is static routing, what is dynamic routing. You will do two types of routing protocols, uh, OSPF, EIGRP, RIP, you can do anyone. Okay. When you're, and clear your DSCP, DNS concept also. Okay. What is DSCP, what is DNS? When you're done with this thing, you can directly jump onto the firewalls. Okay. Then we will talk about the ASA. Okay. Then if you want to go for the another firewall, then you can go for the Palo Alto, you can go for the 40 gate, any firewall. It's your choice. Okay. You can do the research also, which firewalls are running best Okay, in the market right now. So these are the three firewalls that are running in the market currently. Okay. When you are done with this firewalls, okay, then take around one year of experience. Okay. Do job. Right, okay. Get hands-on experience on these firewalls. Okay. Basically, these firewalls also, na, they also have the cloud thing. 
okay in the palo alto we have prisma we can deploy these firewalls also on the cloud got it so yeah uh, when you when you are doing the when you are doing the projects then you will automatically get the idea okay that what is the next thing you have to do what is the best thing for you okay that part you will get it automatically then after this you can go for the aws or it's your choice aws if you want to start with azure if you want to start with the aws it's your choice it doesn't matter okay but aws we can say na it is trending much more than the azure okay so you can go with the aws so that you can oh, merge sure. everything okay so your core concept will be cleared then you can then you are shifting on to the cloud format okay oh. so if you are, if you will do this now you can handle multiple projects okay for the company and company mm -hmm. need persons like this who can handle multiple projects okay it doesn't matter you are from you have done graduation from uh, like it doesn't matter if you have done the arts if you are from the arts if you have done bachelor's in arts bachelor's in like computer application it doesn't matter okay here we are developing what we are developing skills okay right now everyone in in the interview now they will just talk about the skills okay if you have skills you will get qualified okay obviously there are some companies who sees that if you have btech degree and these kinds of degrees okay computer science degrees okay but many of them are right now just seeing the skills part okay no All one right. is Okay. So to begin with CCNA, uh, to whom should I follow? Like, uh, what thing I need to do for the classes and everything to go with the core to complete with this all CCNA thing and the firewall. You, you can. I mean, you, the... you you can do CCNA and firewall at the same time. Okay, it doesn't matter. I will guide you also during the sessions. Okay, but we will not cover the CCNA topics. These uh, you can talk to the management. Okay, from the CDP. They will provide you CCNA for free of cost. Okay, if you All will right, take sir. the ASA, then they will give you the CCNA lectures for free. Okay, because obviously for the this firewall now, for the ASA you have to cover the CCNA. Okay, I have told you this only these topics you have to cover: switch, routing part, DSCP, DNS. You can complete these topics now huh? if you will watch the lecture. You can complete these topics within five to seven days. Okay, obviously and no will... need to worry about CCNA, CCNI. Look, look, CCNA, then we have the CCNP, then we have the CCI. Okay. Yeah. These are different things. Okay. You want a part, yeah. uh, you want a path for the security perspective, right? Yes. Okay. Sir. If we will talk about the CCNP, CCI security also. Okay. That will be a long journey. Okay. But in the CCNP, CCI security, na, the core topic will be your ASA. Okay. And we are separately covering this ASA. Okay, basically on the behalf of just ASN, you can enter into the security. Okay, if you have given well and good interview, they will give you hands-on experience on the ASA. Okay, then in the CCNP CCI security, we have other devices like ESA, WLC, WSA. These are the devices. Eyes. Okay, if you are good with the ASA, okay, then they might might be they will able to give you the training for the eyes. They will give you able to training for the ESA. Okay. That's the future. Okay. No one can tell you. Okay. You cannot expect anything. But right now you can focus on the ASA and the CCNA just. Okay. For around two months, um, just focus on this. Okay. Then if you want, you can go for the next firewall. It's your choice. You can go for the Palo Alto. You can go for the FortiGate. It's your choice. Okay. Obviously, we will do the research on the market also. Okay. You can find it. But I am telling you that th these are the three firewalls which are trending right now. Okay, when you're done with this firewall, I will not uh, recommend you to go for another course. You, if you are done with the three firewalls, these three firewalls are more than enough to enter in the security field. Enter into the security field, take experience around one to two years. Okay, then move on to the cloud. All right. Then you will see the benefits. Okay, don't jump onto the cloud directly. Don't jump onto the security. Just take little little steps. Okay. That will help you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys. That's it for today. Bye-bye. Take care.